Okay. Okay, this is the gas dryer. But one of the first conceptual flaws about it is it uses sodium hydroxide. So Definitely bluer and way hotter. So, I don't know if you can see how much hotter that was, but this torch never did that without a gas dryer. Also, before it would never enable me to put holes in copper pipe like this. I've tried it before. I don't know if you can see this tiny one on the bottom, right there. Really nice little precision hole. It never got hot enough to do that before. And in the end of this, I can already see where it's crystals are hardening up so it is absorbing a lot of water this is a desiccant charge it's not like a sponge moisture absorption deal um, JD has a good footage of one of those working very well but if um, you're trying to get an extremely dry flame you have to use a chemical desiccant a sponge doesn't suck water vapor out of air that's just the way it works so Okay, these two burns here were made without a gas dryer. This was made with a crappy gas dryer. This one here was also with an inferior gas dryer. A minute, that is still really, really blue. It's yellow with the light off. Okay, it's no gas dryer. Every one of these has been scraped. I scraped the oxide off. And as you can see, the gas dryer flame is this one right here. And it was by far the hottest. Yeah, it's chucking up in there. It's getting real wet looking in that end. So I'm definitely absorbing some serious water. It looks really wet right there. I was unable to get solder to stick in areas the flame had touched whereas with it the water vapor has definitely seen been playing a serious role in the quality of the solder joint